Let you all open all your three eyes. Om Nityananda Paramashivoham ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ಲೇಮರ್ಸ್ Security measures, no photography, video, audio recording. Important cautions. Please be aware of the important cautions. what is spa manifestation let's hear from bhagwan himself explaining what is spa manifestation all the 25 states of consciousness when they happen in you due to your chemicals and hormones ups and downs it is powerlessness when it happens in you out of your free will and consciousness it is powerfulness that's all when you fall into sleep it is powerlessness when you enter into sleep it is powerfulness when you fall into dream it is powerlessness when you decide to dream it is powerfulness so i have added the ultimate powerfulness turiyatita turiyatita in your whole being and doing manifest all the powers understand power manifestation is nothing but cognitive shift it is not work it is cognitive shift understand it is just cognitive shift it's not work work is a four letter word <laughs> power manifestation is cognitive shift playing with life playing with being alive static matter dynamic activity strategic existence all these three has no boundary you are one with it you are alive in everything everything listens to you everything 
decides as you want. Power manifestation is cognitive shift, raising your frequency, not work. Now let's understand who is Paramashiva. Bhagwan himself has beautifully explained the Paramashiva in all of us. Paramashiva does manifestation, maintenance, rejuvenation. Pulling out of delusion and liberation. He resides in his supreme Paramashiva Swarupa as Ajomuha, Aradomuha, unborn. Beyond form, formlessness. His Paramashiva Swarupa. That Paramashiva Swarupa manifests with these five faces as Sadashiva, Tatpurusha, Vamadeva, Ahora, Satyojata, Ishana. Five faces he manifests and does the Panjakritya, Srishti. Manifestation, Stiti, Sustenance, Samhara, Rejuvenation, Trobhava, Pulling out of Delusion, Anugraha, Liberation. Understand, he does all these five jobs. Through these five faces, now listen carefully. Tatpurusham, Vamadevam, Satyojatam, Ahoram, Ishanam. These five faces, thus Panchakrityas, each face, each dimension, is not just one F A C E face, P H A S E face. It's not just F A C E, P H A S C. Understand the creation, not just creation getting created, even sustenance need to be created. Destruction need to be created and pulling out of delusion need to be created. Liberation need to be created. Then create creation, manifestation need to be maintained. Maintenance, sthiti itself need to be maintained. Destruction, samhara. The rejuvenation need to be sustained, maintained when it is happening. Pulling out of delusion, throbhava, need to be maintained when it is happening. And anugraha, liberation, Need to be maintained when it is happening. Those micro milliseconds when it is happening. So understand. Satyojata Murti as five face. Ishana Murti as five face. Vamadeva Murti as five face. Agora Murti as five face. Tatpurusha Murti as five face. So, Tatpurusha Murti has his five face. Agora Murti has his five face. Vamadeva Murti has his five face. Satyojada Murti has his five face. Ishana Murti has his five face. All these five Murtis, five five faces put together is twenty five faces of Mahasadashiva. Bhagavan beautifully explained 
Paramashiva. Now, who is His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Nityananda Paramashivam? Let's hear from Bhagwan Himself. Supreme Pontiff of Hinduism, Jagatguru Mahasanidhanam, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Nityananda Paramashivam, is a reviver of Kailasha, the ancient Enlightenment civilization, the great cosmic borderless nation. Is an avatar from and is a supreme pontiff of Hinduism. His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan Nityananda Paramashivam, has made science of our manifestation, yoga, temple based university for humanity, so which in order of Kailasha, led by His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan Nityananda Paramashivam, and Nityananda Order of Monks, Nuns, Hindu diasporas are working for global peace to give superconscious breakthrough to humanity. Nityananda Hindu University, world's largest with extended campus in 150 countries, is collecting, organizing, preserving, time capsuling, decoding, spreading, and reviving 20 million source books of Hinduism and 64 sacred arts. Science like Ayurveda, music, dance, sculpting, astrology, Vastu, and many more. His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan Nityananda Parameshwam, is 293rd. Guru Vaha Sanidhanam of Shamala Pita Sarvanya Pita, ancient apex body of Hinduism and present emperor of Surya Vamsa Surangi Swamrajyam. His Divine Holiness, Bhagavan Nityananda Parameshwam, has survived the worst prosecution of multiple assassination attempts on person and character by anti Hindu elements. Beautifully, Bhagavan now explains who's His Divine Holiness. Bhagavan Nityananda Parameshivam. Everything is infinitely powerful. You realize your potentiality. You establish yourself in the completion, space of completion. You are God, that's all. All of us are gods. Experience is that I was able to see everything around me, above me, the whole 360 degree. I realized not only I was able to see, I was able to feel, experience the skin of the stone on rock on which I was sitting and the skin of this body. Both carry me equally. In both I exist equally. Sangha is a place where the tattvas are taught to you and till it becomes satya, you are supported. Akadas are basically founded by Sadashiva himself. All is Ganas. Shiva Ganas. Exactly the word Gana means. In your length, breadth, depth, if you are filled by Shiva, you are Shiva Gana. All the Shiva Ganas formed the first Akada. Later on, much later, Kapilamuni organizes Mahanirvani Akada. Then, all other Akadas. Mahamandaleshwar of Mahanirvani Akada, the oldest apex body of Hinduism, I welcome every one of you. What I am teaching is from original Agama's Yoga Pada. The science very clearly declares, Sadashiva is very clear. Manifestation of these powers happen when you experience oneness with Sadashiva. When you 
choose your guru the best thing is find a person who is enlightened experience who can play with energy who can directly transmit experience to you and who is in tune with the original shastras the source of the knowledge all the revealed scriptures available about the yoga directly by sadashiva for you to do research study practice question the people who teach the science of our manifestation is a gift to the humanity which is authentic time tested scientific and full proof diksha or the initiation from his divine holiness nityananda parameshwar makes the science directly an experience for the initiates the experience is directly authenticated by the pramanas the shastra pramanas the eternal unchangeable truth revealed in the source scriptures the veda and agamas the apta pramanas the experience of the rishis munis ganas nayanamars alvars and siddhars who are the authority of hinduism who are who have scientists who time tested and verified the science of our manifestation the atma pramanas are the avatar who land on the planet earth to give a super conscious breakthrough to humanity his divine holiness bhagwan nityananda parameshwaram this millenniums avatar personal experience of power manifestation shakshi pramanas or the experience of the millions of disciples devotees and followers initiated into the science of power manifestation by bhagwan himself pratyaksha pramanas or the scientific studies which can be measured measuring the effect of being in the enlightened state nityananda jnana padati powerful cognition for the power of depth now let's go into the satsang for powerful cognition for power of depth here arjuna asks krishna now will you please tell me surely which of the two karma action or sanyasa renunciation is more beneficial when you stop calculating for getting benefit you will start testing the fruit of life listen enriching is enjoying and sharing the fruit of the life when you enrich others you will come alive a mango go does not achieve its ultimate if you just eat the fruit and destroy the seed the fruit realizes itself only when the seed is able to give more fruits life is not and can never be business here again and again arjuna is stuck because he thinks that life is business of course krishna is very compassionate he is embodiment of kindness literally inch by inch he brings arjuna up without giving up on him he does not lose his patience he does not say i told you earlier he does this without losing his patience at any point not only not once does he shout at arjuna he is an embodiment of compassion he comes down to the plane of arjuna and gradually that transforms him by enriching him with the same technique in different ways the question concerning karma and sanyas responsibility and renunciation has been asked from time immemorial and each time it has been answered yet this question remains somebody asked me why is the gita still relevant today i said because we never learnt it although gita was uttered at least 5000 years ago it is still relevant today why it is simply because man has not listened and he has not learned the lesson his lessons yet history repeats itself 
the unconscious process never comes to conscious energy. Man as such is governed to a large extent by the unconscious. He is not even aware what he is going on. He thinks he wants something and runs after it, but by the time he gets his hands on it, he wants something else. So there is a constant restlessness, powerlessness within. This puts a man in constant incompletion, dissatisfaction and depression. Bhagavan beautifully says, because we have never heard it. 5,000 years ago, it was delivered. He, the man is not even aware of what he is after, going after. He thinks he wants something, runs after it, but after he gets it, again he runs for something else. Constant restlessness, powerlessness within. This puts the man into constant incompletion, dissatisfaction and depression. So powerful. With that powerful cognition, let's go to the Shastra Pramana for manifesting the depth dimension. In depth dimension is taken from the Shiva Sutras, verse 1.16. Shuddha Tattva Sandha Nadva Apashu Shaktihi Shuddha Tattva Sandha Nadva Apashu Shaktihi Shiva Sutra Sutra 1.16 Bhagavan Parmashiva says, By fixing the self and aiming at the pure essence, cognizing from the depth of one's being that all that exists is Parmashiva, the pure essence, and attaining and uniting that with the pure essence and essential reality, Parmashiva, he experiences Parmashiva and manifests Parmashiva's infinite powers. Bhagavan beautifully says how Arjuna again asked between the sannyas and the grahastha life and again he asked about how renunciation, how it's going to help his life. But Krishna says so patiently again and again about enriching, how enriching, how the fruit has to become again seed and seed has to give in so many fruits then only enriching and causing happens Bhagavan beautifully explains that enriching is pulling us out of delusion and causing is liberation and he says very clearly it is us who has to raise ourselves or we are the reason to lower ourselves Again, Arjuna has to understand that he has to raise himself for to reach where Krishna is giving. By taking the responsibilism and renunciation of inner thought current, he has to raise himself to receive what Krishna is giving. He really says how a man is going on asking for solution when he does not even listen to Bhagavad Gita even once and how constantly restless uh, running after one and then another and another trying to catch up something which doesn't exist never fulfills and gets tired bored depressed dead again be born the whole cycle if we understand and Krishna slowly explains this very patiently again and again to Krishna. How very patiently Krishna is answering all the questions, showing how to enrich, how to get down to the space of others, being patient, holding the space, slowly and slowly working with them, Understanding all the incompletion in them is nothing but the incompletion that we also had. All the tantrum is also part of us because they are part of us. And understanding to raise that space again and again and again 
without shouting, without be losing the patience, holding that space beautifully, continuously, and manifesting the powers. The way Krishna enriches itself is so beautiful. Even though Arjuna wants to run away, wants to get married other, every other time, doesn't understand what is going on, wants to prove himself the greatness, all that being said, Krishna makes him understand the ultimate signs of enlightenment to him. And each time he gets down to his space to make him understand the enriching and causing, causing extreme manifestation is extreme causing. Simply, your inner space starts radiating the space of Paramashiva. Simply, whoever happens in your side will also start radiating as Paramashiva. It is inside who you need to shift for causing to happen. An extreme manifestation, only extreme causing happens. If you shift inside, automatically the outside has to shift and there all thought currents and views and opinions will shift into the beautiful inner space that you are holding inside you. Bhagwan showcased that as a very important thing. All that exists is a reflection of you. Everything that exists is Paramashiva in different forms and names. And Bhagwan beautifully says, by enriching, we are pulling us out of delusion. Each time going patiently, raising someone is raising us. Bhagwan always says, if you want to become a best car seller, teach 10 people to sell cars. If you want to become best teacher, teach 10 people to become a teacher. If you, whatever you want, if you give it your best, make other people success in that line, you will be successful. Very clearly, Bhagwan says, if you want to be enlightened, go on, go on, go on enriching, pulling yourself out of delusion. That will pull all others out of delusion, which will pull you out of delusion. And more and more the inner space becomes pure. Causing simply happens. Liberation simply happens. Constantly holding that you are responsible for the world. You are responsible to raise yourself to catch that. So that whatever Paramashiva is ready to give, you are ready to hold. Otherwise, it's like a broken pot. How much ever is poured in by Krishna, Arjuna just leaves it. 5,000 years, Krishna is repeating Bhagavad Gita, but nobody has heard it yet. Because it is a broken pot, it keeps leaking. If we understand by enriching and causing, we can raise ourselves to the highest reality. Because if we cause others' reality, it is nothing but our own reality. Causing others' reality is making them understand that Paramashiva is their divine space is the ultimate and they also start living that causing of Paramashiva is ultimate and they cause millions of people as you cause more and more people. That change starts only if you start living that space of Paramashiva. Buddha, people literally ran away from him before enlightenment could not stand him and could not accept what he was saying. But the minute he was enlightened, simply people just flocked around him and simply got enlightened also. The space inside shift. The first thing that we need to do, then everything else shift for us to manifest all the powers of Paramashiva. Such a powerful cognition. Let's go to the Aptha Pramana. Apta Pramana. For moving objects here on the ground. Once Nanda Baba, Krishna's father, and other village members are performing Ignya 
This is from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 24. Lord Krishna was to know what preparation for going on. So he was told by villagers that they were performing yajna so that Lord Indra would please and would bless them with ample of amount of rain for their crops, bring good harvest. Krishna was staunch believer of karma action. He explained the villagers and his father that they didn't need to be worried about what wasn't in the uh, control. He told him to do their karma. His father and his villagers found point in his talk and convinced and with the, this and finally decided not to do the yajna. Indra was ferocious at this and he resolved to revenge he beacon havoc in the village by causing excessive rain, thunderstorm. The people were terrible, terrified and ran hither and thither. They approached Nanda Baba and asked for help. Lord Krishna who knew everything, advised his father to take all the cattle, everyone in the village, and asked them to go towards the Govardhan Parvat hill. Lord Krishna lifted the Govardhan Parvat effortlessly with his little hand, left hand. It was still raining heavily and it rained for seven days so beautiful. He just lifted the Govardhan mountain and saved the villagers and such a huge object on the ground, not an object but a hill itself, beautifully with left hand he lifted. The compassion of Krishna continues to manifest into reality, causing and enriching each and every one. Now let's go to Atma Pramana. Understand, many Western traditions say the atheist traditions in the West say man made God in his mold. Some of the religious traditions in the Western West say God made man in his own mold. I say. God, whether he made man in his own mold or not, I don't know. I don't know God. But I know Sadashiva. God L. He did not make you in his mold. He made you in his own sea. Listen, listen to this word. I am using the word sea. S E E. Not S E A. Listen to this word very carefully. C is an action. I wanted to say, when I see, one end is me, another end is you, another end is you, that's all. Because you are seeing with two eyes what you are seeing, you can't absorb that into you. But I am seeing with the three eyes what I see, I can absorb that into me. And I know it is my own other end. Understand that is why I am using the word not even seeing, see. I am giving you exact literally what I wanted to convey the relationship between you and Sadashiva you are the see not seen seeing see of Sadashiva listen just now I made a statement when you see through the third eye whatever you see you can 
manifest, manipulate as you want. It means what you see will be your own extension. It is you. See, if I can make my right hand bend, do whatever I want, I can do means this is me. What you understand as me is what I convey through the word see. In you, the me is only materially which is connected to you. In me, me is what is connected to me even by see. Listen. In for you, me means what is materially connected to you. For me, me means what is seely connected to me. I don't know how much you catch it. I'll just tell you this small story which really happened. Arunagiri Vishra was trying to explain Advaita to me. He was sitting in the temple. This side, his left side was the Arunachala hill. Right side was the Garbha Mandir of the Arunachala temple. The front I was sitting. Exact eyes you guys are having now when I say me is see. How you are? That is exactly the way I was looking at him. He said, See this hill, this Arunachala, you, me, all one and the same. When he put the hand, of course, I was inside the hand, literally I saw the hill just moving, the Garbha Mandir moving, me moving and disappearing. He, me, hill, Garbha Mandir all disappearing into him. When experientially I saw whatever he was seeing, he is able to photoshop it. He can just pick it up, pick it up, put it on. If you say, I wanted to ask thousands of things and came to any session, the moment you hugged me, everything disappeared. Everything disappeared, I forgot. Some things I remembered later, some things I did not even, I don't even remember. How many of you have this experience? Then you can understand what I am trying to tell. He just merged the whole thing. Listen. Sadashiva made all of us in his sea. Please do not alter the word. This is the Facebook status for all of you. Don't use seen, seeing, S-E-A, no. Sadashiva made all of us in his sea. Let the statement be understood as it is. Because 
you need to understand this concept that can be understood only by this grammatically wrong statement understand it's called arsha prayoga in vedic tradition where the masters do not follow the grammar to explain certain intrinsic deep concept sada shiva made all of us in his see not seen not seeing not s c e n e not s e a no when you see how it is simple extension of you same way when sada shiva sees he feels all of us are simple extension that is our existential reality everything else you believe is the manipulation of the matrix contemplate on this this is the essence of sada shivoham if you see with two eyes you can only see you will not have power over it but when sada shiva sees with three eyes whatever is seen is also me for him whatever is seen by him is also materially connected to him how you feel the part of you which is materially connected to you as you same way he feels everything as materially connected to him so when what he sees is me for him from atma pramana let's go to the shakshi pramana Shakshi Pramanas are the millions of disciple devotees followers palasans yuvrajas who are manifesting the powers of parameshwara now you can see the rudras manifesting the power of moving huge object on the ground we moving a object which is around 10 kgs from from jason's hand here and first you can see the measurement of the kalasha we are having so now you can see that it is exactly 9.4 kgs and now we'll be placing that um the kalasha which is 9.4 kgs on jason's hand before that we will be actually taping his hand to the krishna shila here as it might hurt his hands as it is heavy and it is also how we are able to move the conscious move any matter just by humming the mahavakya and connecting back to swami ji and the space of oneness the same way any problem even in your life just by seeing the power manifesting the shakti avishkarana here you will be able to move any experience which is there inside you or anywhere you, the matter which is stuck inside you that same matter when we move the matter outside the same matter which is stuck inside you will move instantly and another thing which swami ji has beautifully told is when we rudras are the extensions of maha sada shiva we take responsibility to bring all the beings to have the same joy the same experience of being a rudra swami ji's own dna and uh, now you will see that jason's hand is completely flat and we are taping it such, such that it will not be easy to move and also his hand can be comfortable holding the heavy kalasha so that it doesn't move and the power can manifest extraordinarily 
So now his hand is completely flat on the Krista Shila. The Krista Shila is nothing but a granite slab, which is also a facilitator to manifest the Shaktis and helps us to connect with the experience of his own DNA. Now we will be placing the Kalasha on Jason's hand. And as now we have taped his hand and put his hand flat on the Krishna Shila, it will it is stable and it is not moving. So now Sukada Maharaj, you can start humming the Mahavakya. The Mahavakya is O Nityananda Mahasada Shivoham. It is a beautiful mantra and with Swamiji, the Mahavakya which Swamiji has initiated us in. And that is a very powerful mantra which we use to just immediately get back to the space of oneness and start manifesting the powers of Mahasada Shiva. So now Sukhada Maharaj will be humming the Mahavakya and all of you actually can join and the same experience like I already said whatever matter is physically in front of you when you're able to move that and even you witness the Shakti being expressed in your life if any matter is there inside you which is not moving which you are not able to have a breakthrough with the same Mahavakya can be chanted and the same breakthrough can happen even in your lives. So now you can see that Sukhada Maharaj has manifested the power of consciousness over matter and it has actually moved from a stable position. It has moved to, um, he has moved consciousness, he has moved the matter of 9.4 kgs. And this is how Swamiji beautifully trains us, not only to move just physical small objects here, but including the temple pillars and the whole uh, building the Mahasadashiva's temple is only being done by the Rudras through power manifestation. And now we can remove the Kalasha. With this, let's to go to the instruction and Pratyaksha Pramana for manifesting the power of depth, moving heavy object on the ground. Pratyaksha Pramana, scientific studies. What can be measured? Measuring the effects of being in enlightenment state. Vedic sciences have always maintained that consciousness is the very substance of space and time. His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Paramahamsa Nityananda, has clearly defined the existence of 11 dimensions of consciousness. As per his elucidation, space can exist by itself. On the other hand, time can exist only in the presence of space, but can still exist without other dimensions, including the obvious ones, depth, length, and breadth. Source from Avatar Shastra, Chapter 2, Consciousness, page 83. In quantum terms, thought too is energy. Every cell of our body produces thoughts in the form of signals, which may be electrical, chemical, or otherwise. These can be measured in TPS, or thoughts per second. The normal TPS of the average human being can be hundreds of th or thousands. Some thoughts are processed consciously, while others are processed unconsciously. A TPS of zero is the state of Advaita, or enlightenment. 
Space is made up of strings of potential energy, which are in constant vibration spanda, leading to the creation of virtual particles. This is a very basis of the Vedic truth of consciousness. In the Avatar Shastra, Swamiji mentions quantum physicist Amit Goswami's article about entanglement between two people. Quantum physicist of Indian origin, Amit Goswami, made two people meditate together. They were separated in two chambers, one person in each. When one person had a light stroke at his eye, it caused the firing of certain frequency in the brain. Remarkably, at the same moment, the other person's brain also fired, even though he never saw the light. This proves that the energies of people intuitively affect each other. There are two kinds of movement in the world. One kind of movement is maximum speed limit with the speed of light. That's the kind of movement that is allowed in the domain that we call space and time. That's where matter moves, that's where things look diverse. But the other kind of domain is where the speed of communication is infinite. We call it non-local. That's the domain of potentiality. And if there is instant connection in that domain, then do you see it's got to be one? If things are instantly interconnected, that interconnectedness is oneness. That is the oneness that mystics and spiritual teachers talk about. That is the oneness. So simply by recognizing that objects are possibilities, we are looking at a oneness. And then it's just a question of language. Question of language. What should we call this oneness? Whole brain activation studies were done on Nityananda Gurukul students. The Bender Gestel test assesses the level of whole brain activation, the student's ability to see the big picture and recall the details of it. It is more than an IQ test. It was showing outstanding results on the memory ability of the Gurukul students. It is very unusual for students to remember such a high number of Gestalt forms. Each Gurukul student attended to the test card carefully and persistently transposed the Gestalt form. Remaining calm, cool, and collected, they initially approached each Gestalt form with a keen observation and analysis of the form, and then exhibited a steady preservance attending a minute details. Source Avatar Shastra, Chapter 8, Third Eye Awakening, page 177. Charting Future Terrain with Higher Education. This article explores the role of contemplative practices within an emerging interdisciplinary area that are referred to as creativity and consciousness studies. Within the new area, consciousness is studied from an integral perspective that brings together insights from a range of wisdom traditions and modern science. Meditation is presented as an essential first person modality for investigating consciousness and formal and non-formal approaches to meditation and delineated to establish important guidelines for the introduction of meditation into an academic setting. The role of first person experience helps to develop new notions of rigor and interdisciplinary learning that can lead to an expanded educational experience, which can help to develop qualities such as mental clarity, inner calm, insights, compassion, and creativity. The article closes with reflections on the importance of expanding our approach to education in light of the demanding challenges and creative opportunities in today's world. Source, Meditation, Creativity, and Consciousness. Power of Depth Dimension. Power of Moving Heavy Object on Ground. Setting Up. For the setting up process, you will need a camera with a timestamp. Yananjana, this is optional. You will also need any heavy object with a stable bottom. For example, you can use a speaker, 
a heavy pot or a stone grinder, etc. You will also need a chalk or a wipeable marker. You will also need a ruler or measuring tape. Take a few moments to set up your camera. Step number one, download the timestamp app. Step number two, click on the video. And step number three, ensure that the time is shown on screen. Step number four, make sure the camera is facing you. Please take a few minutes to set it up. Guidelines Setup Step number one, place the heavy object in front of you on the ground. Step number two, draw an outline around the base of the object. Step number three, set up your camera to be focused on the heavy object for the entire duration of the manifestation. Start Step number four, turn on the video recording with timestamp. Step number five, apply Yananjana between your brows, if you have. Next, bring your awareness between your brow center and gently focus while connecting to Paramashiva. Step number six, keep your attention fully to the object in front of you without touching it and drop any expectations that arise. Step number seven, sit unclutched for 21 minutes, listening to the Mahavakya chanting. Step number eight, Manifest the movement of heavy object without touching. Step number nine, after the Mahavakya subsides, verify how much the heavy object has moved beyond the outline. Ensure that you capture the object's movement on camera. Step number 10, with the object in full view at all times, slowly bring the camera close to capture the object's final resting position. Take your ruler and measure the distance the object has traveled. Step number 11. After you have recorded the movement, you can turn off your camera. And step number 12. Celebrate with gratitude your manifestation of moving the heavy object. Let us now listen to the spiritual instructions. Bar manifestation instructions. Let's sit straight, the head, neck and back in a straight line so that beautifully the kundalini energy raises to the agnya where the manifestation happens. Usually we are, our, our um, awareness is on Muladhara, Swadishtana and Manipuraha where navel center, your below navel center. Here bringing the awareness to your third eye and sitting straight will give us amazing possibility of power manifestation. Now let's understand Few words that Bhagavan is repeatedly using Shakti Pada, oneness, be unclutched, initiation. So, here first we will see in Bhagavan's words what is Shakti Pada. Let me give an introduction about what is Shakti Pada process. Please understand. You would have seen or heard about how the chicken sits on the egg and hatches. Of course, in the modern countries, this does not happen. Machine sits on the egg and <laughs> our egg sits on the machine. In those days, originally when <laughs> hens and chicken were getting produced on the planet Earth, the hen used to sit on the chicken and hen used to sit on the egg and the <laughs> Chicken will come out of the egg. See, same way, Sadashiva, sitting, means the ultimate cosmic energy sitting on the individual soul and making the individual soul into cosmic energy is Shaktipada. Hence, sitting on the egg and making the chicken happen, same way. You may think, how come, what is going on here? That hen is only sitting just by the body heat of the hen and the egg is becoming chicken. Because no surgery is done and nothing goes inside. It's only sitting. Same way, it is just sitting. It's only the presence 
द शक्ति पादा मेक्स द इंडिविजुअल सोल इनटू कॉस्मिक सोल beautifully bhagwan explained shakti pada how individual soul becomes cosmic soul and let's listen to initiation you see let me explain the initiation initiation is the process beyond your intellectual understanding the transmission of lamp happens now you understood something intellectually there is something which is not understood which can't be transmitted through the words that is transmitted that's what we call initiation sometime i tell you know, people but unless you are initiated the techniques do not create the result the reason is you do not grasp completely whatever is expressed through words initiation is like a it just transmits whatever need to be transmitted beyond logic and beyond words people ask me why to wear this bracelet or this mala and all those things this all will remain to you why bracelet in the hand it will remind you before eating did you meditate it's a constant reminders before eating let you be reminded did you do the meditation that is why this bracelet that is why this mala that is why this external things sometime this external things does a big job of reminding you constantly that is why take the help of external things also nothing wrong people ask me why we can uh, just be spiritual without having external things if you can really you are welcome but i don't think anybody who speaks in that way is successful i've never seen people becoming successful avoiding the external things just having internal things and it is just nice way of escaping from yourself <laughs> Beautifully, Bhagwan explained initiation. Let's listen to be unclutched. What is to be unclutched? The thoughts. Every thought is independent, illogical, unconnected, and unclutched. Because the gap between two thoughts is too small. The neutral space between the two two thoughts. is too small you think all the thoughts are connected and it is in the sham form it is not by your very nature every thought is independent illogical unconnected and unclutched every between every thought you experience a neutral space when you change the gear whether you go from neutral to 1 or 1 to 2 or 2 to 3 or 3 to 4 or 4 to whatever whatever gears may change but every time you have to come to the neutral space only then you can go to the next gear even if you want to go from 2 to 3 you have to come to the neutral space only then you can go to 3 same day between every thought you experience a neutral space You experience a neutral space between every thoughts, between every thought. That neutral space, that silence, is what I call peace or bliss. The peace which exists, the bliss which exists already in you, between every thought, the gap of the thought. the gap between the thoughts that neutral space is the peace is the bliss when you understand you are unconnected independent illogical and unclutched by your very nature you will start experiencing 
the neutral space in you, neutral space which exists in you, you will start living from moment to moment in spontaneity. We need to understand one more thing. This technique of being unclutched, it does miracles in your being. In the body level, or in the mental level, or in the being level. In every level, when you understand the truth, by your very nature, you are unclutched. The tremendous quantum transformation. You take a quantum jump, the transformation happens in quantum, not step by step. Just on jump. You take a quantum jump and experience the truth awakening in you. The oneness space is the most beautiful space that Bhagwan himself is explaining how we are ferocious beyond the tiredness and boredom we can experience the space of oneness and be unclutched. Oneness is not imagination. Oneness is not visualization. Oneness is not even just declaration. It is your existence. And an idea which is you is oneness. The idea which has become part of your very space which does not tire you or bore you by the passage of the time is oneness. Mahadeva says in the Agama, Sadashiva beautifully explains in the Agama, Kala, Yama cannot tire you or bring boredom to you if something becomes your space. Devi achieved the blissful state and union with Mahadeva on Shivaratri day because our space became oneness. Anything which brings tiredness or boredom has not yet become your space. If living in this body brings you tiredness and boredom, you are not going to be living in this body forever. When that becomes too much, you are going to drop it and move ahead. If you want to be in oneness forever, it should become part of your space means you should become ferocious with you and break this very tiredness and boredom. Only when you deal you with the ferociousness, you break the tiredness and boredom. With that ferociousness, you need to make oneness as your space. Anything stands as an imagination in the length level, visualization in the breadth level, declaration in the depth level. If you open your time with ferociousness, it just sinks into space level. With this ferociousness, the time layer in you opens and the oneness from imagination to visualization to declaration, it becomes your space. The way of existence. The most important, Bhagavan says, being unclutched, understanding the Shakti Pada, the oneness space, and chanting the Mahavakya. The Mahavakya, the power of the Mahavakya pushes you into the higher states of consciousness. Here Bhagwan himself explains how we can experience the Shaktipada raised higher consciousness through Mahavakya. 
it's one of the very important revelation by sadashiva all the electronic equipments work when the electrons are made to vibrate that that happens by the light when the electricity is supplied the light particle vibrates the electronic equipment starts working just like that the spiritual power and the umbilical cord connection spiritual umbilical cord connection between you and me it works with sound particle for example my integrity with the cosmos sadashiva maha sadashiva it reverberates in certain level of frequency when you are integrated to me you also start reverberating in the same frequency if your integrity goes down that is when you start connecting with me only as a manager or this organization head or your purvasham father mother your connection with me goes down to the lower level if the integrity gets reduced i was wondering what is the way we can bring people to the higher integrity immediately and the feeling connection so they start manifesting the powers they start staying in the space of sadashivatva sadashiva revealed a beautiful sound i can tell you this is like a password at any point if you are not able to bring yourself to oneness you are a little shaken disturbed or for some reason you are not able to bring yourself to oneness this is like a password you type whether your mind feels connected or not the energy will start flowing in you beyond the depth dimension you see all mind oscillation restlessness all mental idea based feeling connected or not feeling connected is only length breadth depth level not in the space level but this sound will straight infuse energy from the space level like for example if the power goes off automatically the generator will get switched on and the power supply will be going on so end result will not be lost whether government power supply or the generator power supply end result will not be stopped so whenever you feel little that oneness is you are not catching it just feed this password immediately the oneness will open up and you will start manifesting the powers energy and the whole space will shift it is directly from sadashiva it's a beautiful sound i don't even want to say it's a mantra it is not even a mantra because there is no meaning in it you can't derive a meaning for it it just flashed like a password for all the initiations i am giving one single password for all the initiations i am giving and the initiations i gave i am giving i will be giving for all that this is like one password don't even repeat like a mantra just feed like a password and it will just open up your whole being will open up listen carefully it starts with the vibration o listen and then repeat o very deep om nityananda nityananda maha sada shivam so bhagwan gave beautiful explanation of how you can be in shakti pada visualize parameshiva who has come down as bhagwan nityananda parameshivam from kailasha remembering parameshiva in your third eye again and again bringing your awareness to your third eye 
simply makes you manifest powers. Absolute unclutching. How Bhagwan said, the neutral zone, nothing ever touches the screen. Like same way, the movie does not touch the screen, whether it is happening in ferocious or any soft, beautiful, nothing touches the screen. Be unclutched like the screen. And to experience the state of Paramashiva, your inner space being completely unclutched. Complete completion to experience the space of Paramashiva. Inside us, the complete completion happens when we are in tune with Paramashiva. That everything is redundant and irrelevant. The essence of completion is irrelevant. Nothing matters in your life because everything is complete completion. Oneness with Paramashiva. How Bhagavan said in ferocious breaking the boredom and tiredness, just being in the space of oneness with Paramashiva to manifest the powers of Paramashiva. Tyaga as Paramashiva is your only strength. Now declaring complete integrity with Bhagavan to experience the being of Paramashiva. How Bhagavan said, chanting the Mahavakya raises your frequency and that is your only strength to manifest any reality. Being in this beautiful space of Paramashiva, you can experience such a beautiful space, state, powers and becoming the being of Paramashiva, manifesting whatever you want. Now, you will be manifesting the powers watching the oneness capsule and chanting the Mahavakya Om Nityananda Paramashivoham. We'll be playing the Mahavakya and the oneness capsule for you to manifest powers. At end of the Mahavakya, you can start with the verification and sharing and causing. Thank you. Om Om Yanam Paramashivam Om Yanam Paramashivam Yanam <laughs> Let Paramashiva's third eye manifest in all our third eyes. Let the Amrita pour. Let the Vanni open up. Manifest. In all of us. Let Paramashiva overflow, manifest the power in all of us. Third Om Yanam Paramashivam Om 
Sambhan Paramashivoham Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Nityananda Paramashivoham Nityananda Paramashivoham Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Nityananda Paramashivoham Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Paramashivoham Let Paramashiva's third eye manifest in all our third eye. Let the Amrita pour, let the Vanni open up, manifest in all of us. Let Paramashiva overflow, manifest the power in all of our third actions. Om 
the power in all of us are actually om jnana paramashivam om jnana paramashivam ಪರಮಶಿವಂ ಪರಮಶಿವಂ ಪರಮ 
Verification process. Please ensure to thoroughly verify the following. Verify that the time and date stamp appear on your video. Number two, verify that your video has a wide angle horizontal view and has a full view of the object at all times. Number three, verify that your video recording is continuous without stopping and restarting during the manifestation process. Number four, verify that you have not edited your video in any way and that the camera has not moved during the manifestation process. Number five, but during the verification process, you will need to reposition the camera to capture the movement of the heavy object. Number six, video verification of the object's movement by measuring the distance the object has traveled beyond the drawn outline. And number seven, now that the verification process is complete, the next instructions will guide you how to upload and share your video. Thank you so much for your participation. We are at the end of the power manifestation, but most important part of the power manifestation. Here, we are going to share all that you have manifested with the social media groups. Here we have Sri Kalasha Kotiyar Manifesting Power Groups. Thousands of people are part of that. And you can share there and you can post your powerful cognition and the videos. The 
Link is tinyurl.com slash power manifestation. It is at the left corner of the page. You can click on it and you can post your beautiful experience in the power manifestation group. Why sharing and causing is very important part of power manifestation. Bhagwan beautifully exp explains that sharing is pulling us out of delusion and causing is liberating us. We are the ones who need to start experiencing the higher states of reality, how we need to exist. Beautifully, Bhagwan explains when you are sharing with others the ultimate, beautiful, multidimensional logic, your brain rewires into the higher space of consciousness, the Turiyatita state. Again and again, when you experience even a little bit, you share with the world, your experience becomes reality. Same thing when you cause others to come and get initiated for higher reality, you are caused into the higher purpose, the ultimate reality. Bhagwan says extreme causing, extreme power manifestation is extreme causing. So beautifully he explains how we our strength is declared on Paramashiva. The power manifestation happens exactly in tune to that. And sharing with the world, continuously reiterating ourselves, the experience that we had from the powerful cognition and manifesting the space of Paramashiva, the state of Paramashiva, the beings of Paramashiva, we become Paramashiva. Go on sharing and causing, which is the most important part of how you have experience your reality when you go to a temple we pray and we see that beautiful experience happen in us and then share with the world that how amazing the temple experience has manifested as your reality same way when you manifest powers when you share with the world it becomes more and more the depth cognition of you and you will be experiencing more powers even if you're manifested very small it does not matter the quantity, Bhagavan says. The quality is important. If it is authentic, please go ahead and share with the world. Do not doubt, have self-doubt, self-denial, self-hatred, come and block anything. Experience the ultimate in deep seeking and gratitude. Bhagavan manifest in you with a deep prayer that asking Bhagavan to make this reality as your existential reality. With that, let's end with the Purna Mantra. Thanking Bhagwan for all these great experience. We have come to the end of the Power Manifestation course and we end with the Purna Mantra. Om Purna Madha Purna Midam Purna Purna Madhashyate Purnasya Purna Mataya Purna Meva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hi Hari Om Tat Sat Sarvam Bhagavate Sri Nityanda Parmashim Padukar Panamastu Om Nityanandam Thank you for participating in the Jnana Patati, Nityananda Jnana Patati course. Please go ahead and select more power manifestation and every day experience the ultimate reality for yourself. Nityanandam Om Nityananda Paramashivoham